Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Altit. I'm a neonatologist at the Manchel Children's Hospital. Today we will be going over how to use the butterfly ultrasound, which is a handheld ultrasound that can be used also in neonatology for heart imaging, lung imaging, and brain imaging. And today we'll be going through some of these modalities, how to plug it, what kind of material, and the images that can be acquired. Hi, I'm Annie Lapointe, a neonatologist at Chus Saint Justine. I'll be presenting you how to do the view for uh, the cardiac ultrasound. Uh, hello, I'm Pia Vintermark. I'm a neonatologist at the Montreal Children's Hospital. Today I will be presenting how um, to, to place the probe for the brain ultrasound. In terms of the material that is needed, you will be using some ultrasound gel, the iPad or iPhone that can be connected with the app, as well as the ultrasound probe. The ultrasound probe may be uh, plugged into the iPad or iPhone, depending on which probe you have. It could be a, a USB-C or another type of uh, portal of entrance, but you want to have a connector that is compatible with the device that you will be using. So very easily, you wanna plug this to your iPad. And then we will be showing how to use the app of the butterfly. So on the iPad or the iPhone, you will find an application that's called the Butterfly IQ. You can click on it. And whenever you are plugged, it should be detecting right away the ultrasound probe. Within this section, you can have multiple different presets and you can film and you can do other types of actions depending on the actual preset that you're choosing. So we're gonna bring this down. Here you have another arrow button. And on this view, you can see that you have your previous archives the academy and you can choose again to go back to your ultrasound probe. On the ultrasound probe in preset you can choose which of the preset you are interested. Today we will be looking at the preset of pediatric abdomen, pediatric cardiac and pediatric lung. These are the ones that are the most presets for the organs of interest. If you are interested in vascular access, you can also use the vascular access one. The fourth button that we want to show is actions. The actions allow you to have other possibility of measurements or other types of ultrasound mode. So for example, if you're interested in color Doppler, you can have your box of color Doppler on a particular structure in order to see where the blood flow is going. Red is towards the probe, blue is away from the probe. Here you have high or low, depending on the velocity filter that you're interested. So for structures that typically are arterial, you want to use something with a higher velocity in order to filter out the lower velocity from your field here. You can, by pressing constantly on the little button, can change the size of your box. And by pressing on the box and moving it around, you can see that your box is moving over the structure of interest. When I want to get out of a color Doppler mode, I just press X and I can check for my other actions, and for example, do an M mode. The M mode will interrogate across the line of intonation. On the X axis, you have the time, and the Y axis represent exactly the cut of this line on the ultrasound probe. Once you're done, you can pause and you can save your image by pressing on the picture button. You might want to do your measurements before so you can use your line 
of interest. And do your measurement on the M mode, which will give you the exact duration of that measurement, because this is duration. And this will give you the distance between these two points. In order to film a sequence, once you're scanning, you can press here on the camera. By pressing on the camera, you can see how long is your loop of your scan. When you click stop, the images will be kept. And it has recorded your last loop. If you are interested in doing a still frame image, which means just an image that is not moving, when you are scanning, you can freeze your image by using this little snow button. It looks like a snowflake. And then you can go back. And by going back, you can select the exact frame you are interested in keeping select and you just take the camera to select your actual frame and it will save it here. So if we take, for example, another frame that we're interested in keeping, you can select, the frame will appear here, you press on the camera and it will save it. Now we are at nine. If you are in a frozen mode and you wanna go back to the scanning mode, the only thing you need to do is to click again on the snowflake and it goes back to the scanning. If you want to see where your images are stored, you can see that the numbers are here. And by clicking, you can actually see all the clips that you actually saved on the patient. And you can save the study on the cloud that you're interested in saving. So as a recap, in order to increase your depth or decrease your depth, you just click on your image and then by putting your finger on it, you can, sorry. So as soon as this appears, you can just drag or bring up. But you need to be clicked and stay in click on your image. Similar to the gain, you can go right or left and it will change your game. So I click on it, go right, I click on it, go left. And this is how you change your game. If you click on the image, you also see TGC appear. If you click on TGC, you can choose to change the game depending on a section of the image. So for example, here, I'm changing the gain close to the upper probe. Here I'm changing the gain, sorry, in the middle. And then here I can change the gain in terms of the further field. So by convention, you can choose also where you're gonna be putting the site of your probe. So for typical cardiac ultrasound, usually your probe B will be on this side of the screen, which is the right side of the screen. This tells you that this pin here, which is the orientation of the probe, will be towards the left side of the patient. So on the baby, this is the left arm of the patient, and the pin of your probe will be towards this arm. For the ultrasound of the brain, we have found that one of the best presets for the resolution is the pediatric abdominal one. So you can choose the pediatric abdominal one and you can see that automatically the pen appears here. So the first step you would do is click on it so that your B appears by convention here. I am scanning a patient and I'm interested in measuring a particular measurement in terms of diameter or distance. You can pause your image, select the frame of interest, 
And then this time you can see this button and you can measure a line. You can put the line across the distance of interests by clicking on the blue dots and by moving. So I'm always clicking each time I'm moving or that I'm moving the blue dots. The distance will appear here and I can save my distance by pressing the camera. It added a tenth image to my scan. If you want to zoom on a particular zone, you can double click and you can see, or you can actually stay on the screen and then use your two fingers in order to zoom on that zone. And it's showing you the zoom. On the side, you can actually see the scale in centimeters. So this equals one centimeter, this equals one centimeter. And I can go back to the main screen like this. So you can see that my scale is changing as I'm changing my depth. If you are interested in measuring the velocity of flow in a vessel, you can use, first of all, the vascular preset. And within that, you have to select the pulse Doppler. Pulse Doppler will interrogate the speed of flow, the velocity of flow, within a vessel at the exact point of interrogation of interest. So to depict this, and I'm going to close this, it's showing us how to do it. You have here your image that you're acquiring with your probe on the patient. This will allow you to go and select the exact area that you're interested in probing the speed of flow, which means you would select exactly here, the zone of the vessel of interest, that you're interested in looking at what's the velocity of blood flow within this vessel. Once you have selected your place, you can start your spectrum. On the x-axis, you have time, and on the y-axis, you have velocity. Once you have acquired your spectrum of velocity, you have to pause it by pressing the snowflake, and within here, you can even go back. No, it's not go back. You can here measure using the line. You can go and trace the peak of your systolic velocity and your end of diastolic velocity. So typically, you would have a blood flow phase with a peak systolic and end diastolic, peak systolic, end diastolic. And you would indicate the two points. Here, it indicates that I have put my point at peak systolic velocity of 150 centimeter per second. And my end diastolic velocity is 59 centimeter per second. The time between your peak and your end is 1.15 seconds. Once done, you take the picture of that, and this will be saved under your saved pictures. Once you're done doing this, you can press on the snowflake and go back to your main page. When you wanna save your study, you go on your images. You need to add your patient details. So we will be putting the study ID. Study. Zero, 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 one. And then you can press here on save. And this appears study ID 0001, 11 captures. And then from that, you can save your study. You can save that as a draft or sign in. We're gonna save it as a draft. So now your images are all saved under your archives. So we have here, on our archive, our study 0001. You can go back and select those images of interest.